G'day. In my last challenge, that is in my last video, I provided a challenge for you. And the challenge was this. To draw a square, draw a decent sized one on a piece of scrap paper, all right angles, equal sides. The challenge was to divide the square into 10 acute angle triangles. Now, we had already learned how to divide an, an obtuse angle triangle into seven acute angle triangles by, as it were, chopping off these two sides and using a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all acute angle triangles. And I hope you notice, if that had seven and this has ten, then this has three more. And it can be done in this way. If I choose a point up here towards the middle of the square, for example, and join all, that was a bit badly done, join all the three corners, four corners, these three triangles are going to be acute angle triangles. <clears throat> this one has an obtuse angle. So there's one, two, three. And this one I divide up in that way. I draw a line up towards the, the top. I split it. I draw one across like that. And I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven acute angle triangles plus these three. And then my 10 acute angled triangles cut out of or separated from a square. So far, so good. The question, though, that arises from this is how do I know where to put that point? Can I put it just anywhere? And it relies on a very simple and very interesting property of circles, not squares. Here's the property. In a circle, I'm going to draw the top half of a circle, but just imagine it's, it's continuing around underneath. In a circle, this is a diameter in the centre of the circle there. We often represent it with a, a, an over-origin. There's a rule in geometry, which I trust you learn at some point, and hopefully you already know, that says this that any angle that you draw in a semicircle is a right angle. Any angle at all. Where the diameter subtends an angle at the circumference, at a point on the circumference. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I choose a point inside the semicircle and join both ends of the diameter. Let's do this in green. It means that I'll get an obtuse angle. And if I do it outside of the circle, I will get an acute angle. But on the circle, it will be a right angle. Inside obtuse, outside acute. So if I'm wanting to generate acute angles in a square, what I must do is this. I must, on this side of the square, put my pair of compasses in the halfway position and draw a semicircle, which will go through the centre of the square. So I draw a semicircle. And I do exactly the same on the other side. And you can imagine one on the bottom as well if you wish. Why do we draw them? Well, if I chose a point inside this semicircle, it'll create an obtuse angle. 
But if I choose a point outside the semicircle, it will create an acute angle, a sharp angle. And you notice that I chose my red point outside. I chose the point outside this semicircle so that when I drew the lines out from this side, it would create an acute angle. And it's outside this semicircle, that is above it, so that when I draw the lines up from the bottom, because it's outside this semicircle, it's going to create an acute angle just like this one. And because inside the semicircle here, it's going to be an obtuse angle. So the construction to find the location of that point is to do just this with a pair of compasses, to draw two semicircular arcs and I'll try and shade this area. Your point must be somewhere in that area in order to create three acute angle triangles and one obtuse angle triangle ready for you to divide the obtuse angle triangle up. Again, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like the video and leave a comment. Subscribe to find out about future videos. And as always, I thank you for watching.